Michael. Uh, today we're going to talk about capnography uh, as it pertains to the American Heart Association guidelines. Um, how many of you have done work with capnography before? Anybody? Nobody. Capnography has become <clears throat> a very important part of the American Heart Association guidelines, and mainly what we're looking at here is um, when we're using pulse oximetry, pulse oximetry tends to be somewhat unreliable. I'm sure you've all had patients where you put a pulse ox on, it's giving you some uh, really uh, weird reading. You look at it and it doesn't really match the patient up. Remember, we always treat the patient, not the machine. So, but we still don't have a good idea of, of how the patient is perfusing and how they're oxygenating. Uh, if they have problems with peripheral vascular resistance, um, their, their extremities are cold, uh, if they have nail polish on, any of, the, any of a number of things will actually fool a pulse ox cylinder. Capnography is not fooled quite so easily, and it's actually a little faster. What you see on the monitor for the uh, pulse oximetry, um, do you know how old, how old that number is you're seeing? Can you guess? Second. It's not on the test. Second. Second. Almost a minute. Is it really? Yeah. So what you're seeing is actually um, what happened a minute ago, not what's actually happening now. With capnography, what you're seeing is, is no more than 15 seconds old. And since it's not trying to measure the oxygen, it's measuring exhaled carbon dioxide from the patient's system. Um, we have a narrow range that we watched, it, which is 35 to 40. And that's where a patient breathing normally should be at. If they have difficulty in breathing, or they're breathing too fast, the number will be high or low. If they're breathing too quickly, the number will be below 30 or 35. And if they're breathing too slow, the number will be above 40 because they're retaining too much CO2. So capnography for use in the hospital. And hospital use, uh, we're informed that the unit here at Lakeland that's in surgery has them and the uh, uh, supposedly there's a module anybody's on a PCA pump, yeah. they have a capnography module. And I don't know if that's true or not. So any of you guys work where you, you deal with a PCA pump? Mm -hmm. Yes. Avoids people so it's possible you... And not breathing correctly. So it is possible if you're working with a PCA pump, then you could run into the to, uh, waveform capnography. There's two different units that you'll be able to use. This one right here, which goes on the end of a yeah, endotracheal tube. And this unit here that looks a lot like a nasal cannula, because that's essentially what it is. It's a nasal cannula with a capnography unit built in. So instead of the normal uh, unit that you would expect to see, what you have is a cannula with this little flap. So as the patient exhales into the flap, it goes down this tube and into the unit and measures actually their end tidal CO2. <clears throat> when we're dealing with patients that are in cardiac arrest, the normal number I told you for uh, Capnography we're looking for is what? 35 to 40. In cardiac arrest, we're not going to get 35 to 40 because we're doing chest compressions and we're breathing for the patient. So what you're looking for is anything greater than 10. You're looking for a capnography number greater than 10. If I have a capnography that's less than 10 and I'm doing uh, and the patient's in cardiac arrest and we're doing chest compressions, what do I need to look at? Well, whether or not their chest is rising or not. Yeah, our, it, what we're looking for, the first thing you should look at if you're not getting, if you have a number below 10 is, are we doing effective compressions? So check the person that's doing CPR, maybe they're getting tired, maybe they're just distracted and they're not paying attention. Um, the next thing we need to look at is uh, when we're, we're doing uh, chest compressions and we're ventilating the patient, we're doing uh, good ventilations and we're looking for the, the waveform which will come up on the monitor. On the life packs it'll come up at the bottom of the monitor here, you, we have to actually program it in and tell it to place it here and what you're looking for is a nice even waveform. So the way this works is on both of these units, whether it be the ET tube or the cannula unit, there has this little orange tube, uh, orange adapter right here. You take the adapter, you find the port, you screw it in, and on the life packs, an extra uh, uh, 
an extra number will pop up here on the side. It's not there until you actually screw the unit in. Once the patient starts breathing, then the patient, the number will start to go and you'll see the capnography. There's my number and the bottom here will be my waypoint if I'll stop talking for a second. it as a standard now in the field to measure for uh, whether, <laughs> whether we have a correct ET2 placement. We were using the uh, color metric units, which you'll see when you go around to the stations um, before, but with uh, waveform capnography, with waveform capnography, you saw the waveform at the bottom there. The waveform will only show up if I'm actually in the lung. So if I've intubated, if you're bagging a patient who's intubated, and you have the unit uh, hooked up, which would be the other one. It looks like a T piece. Oh, adapter this piece right here. If you're bagging through this one here, this T piece, um, but as you go through yeah. and bag this, if this is not in, if the patient has extubated themselves or the, the tube is not placed correctly in the first place, you will not have a waveform show up at the bottom of your unit. Sorry. The T-piece just simply fits onto the bag valve mask and then this has a 15 millimeter adapter and it'll, it'll hook up to the mask or an ET tube or any other standard unit that you'd use to bag the patient with, a Compi-2 King Airways. If uh, when you're bagging the patient, like I said, if you're, if you're using an ET tube, combi tube, or a King airway, if it's not there, then you won't have any capnar. So if I'm not sure if I'm in the lungs or not when I'm bagging, all I gotta do is look here and see. If I'm in the lungs, I'll have a waveform. If I don't, I won't have a waveform. And your number you're looking for, if it's cardiac arrest, is what? Something greater than 10. Anything greater than 10. Remember too that when you're looking on your test, the number, the, the term listed on your exam and for the American Heart Association, you'll see it's listed as PETCO, P-E-T-C-O-2. And PETCO is the same as end title, CO2, which is the same as capnography. It, it's all, it's just different ways of saying it. But what I'm telling you is if you see PETCO on the test, PETCO is, is capnography, it's end title, CO2 detection. So, our number, our, if patient is breathing and they're conscious, the number should be between 35 and 40. If we're doing CPR, it should be anything greater than 10. If it's less than 10, then what's the first thing we're going to look for? Are they doing effective compressions? If they're not doing, if they are doing effective compression, what's the second thing you're going to look for? Yeah, is the person ventilating doing a, a good job of ventilating the patient? actually giving them time, good inhale, and giving them time to actually exhale. Okay. Any questions? 